the reason that that um, Apple works is because a billion people want an iPhone. Whether the world stinks, whether the world is chaotic at war or not at war, people still want a billion iPhones because the iPhone's a good idea and it's a better idea than a pad and paper 100 years ago. And the reason Bitcoin works is because I can put all my money on my phone and zap it at the speed of light and no one can steal it from me and, and I get rich. Bitcoin prices have soared by about 175% in the past year, with about $30,000 of these gains made after the US Securities and Exchange Commission approved several spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in January. Demand for the ETFs skyrocketed wildly in March, taking Bitcoin to a new all-time high of over $73,000. Two important ETF records were made around the same time Bitcoin hit new all-time highs in March. First, the funds recorded their highest daily net inflows of $1.05 billion. They also recorded 17 consecutive days of net inflows. On Tuesday, June 4th, the funds recorded their second highest daily net inflows, drawing $886.75 million, just $163 million shy of the March 12th record. This was followed by another day of substantial inflows on Wednesday, with combined net inflows of $488.1 million. Wednesday marked the 17th consecutive trading day of inflows for the funds, tying the previous record made in February. According to senior Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunas, the spot Bitcoin ETFs are now experiencing their third wave of super bullish demand. And this wave could potentially be bigger than previous ones with a more significant impact on Bitcoin prices. So far, institutional investors have shown a voracious appetite for spot Bitcoin ETFs, which is why MicroStrategy founder and executive chairman Michael Saylor is predicting a gold rush decade for the largest cryptocurrency between 2024 and 2034. In a recent interview, Saylor addresses one of the most pressing questions potential investors have about Bitcoin. Is it too late to invest in 2024? This is a common question many prospective investors have. And it's not unexpected considering that Bitcoin has been around for 15 years and many early investors have made millions of dollars. To answer this question, Saylor gives an interesting analogy, comparing investing in Bitcoin now or even a few years down the line to buying property in New York City a hundred years or a few decades ago. Saylor explains that New York was already the greatest city in North America by 1776 more than a hundred years after it was founded by Dutch colonists around 1624. Anyone who had wanted to buy property in New York in 1776 would probably have considered themselves late to the party and thought those who got in earlier quite lucky. Yet, people have continued to invest in the city and make great returns on their money for hundreds of years since then. Saylor reckons the same is going to happen with Bitcoin. Some people bought when one coin was under $100, some when it was $10,000 per coin, and millions are going to buy when a coin is selling for $100,000 or even a million. And investors on all levels will make their money in multiple folds. We will now bring you clips from Sailor's interview with Stefan Graham and Jack Selby, hosts of the Iced Coffee Hour podcast, as he paints a perfect picture of what Bitcoin's development will look like in the coming years. But before we do, please take a little time to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. I think the, the apex property of the human race is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is Manhattan and cyberspace. If you think about investing in Manhattan as a good metaphor, the question is, is it too late to invest in Manhattan? Well, was it too late in 1680? No. Was it too late in 1776? No. Was it too late in, in 1865? No. Was it too late in 1914? No. 1945? No. 1976? No. 2000? No. What is the story of, and, and why is that, by the way? It's because Manhattan's built on an island. There's a limited amount of land it's the nexus, the commercial, the commercial center of the North American trade network or the Western trade network. Everybody with money and power wants to go through or needs to go through Manhattan at some point in time. That's been the case for hundreds of years. 
everyone that ever bought real estate in Manhattan bought it from someone that paid less for it than they're currently buying it for, right? Mm -hmm. And why does it keep going up? It keeps going up because we keep printing more currency, right? It's, and so, so scarce, desirable assets go up forever. And in this case, is, uh, is Bitcoin safer investment than Manhattan? I think so. Because Manhattan competes with Tokyo and London and Paris, and Manhattan is just a, a physical city. Bitcoin is is the center of the digital, uh, the center of digital commerce uh, or of the digital economy. It's like the capital city. It's the the nexus point of the entire digital economy. And it has appealed to everybody on earth speaking every language. You could think of it as a city that's 276 blocks high, 276 blocks wide, 276 blocks deep. That is the integer cube root of 21 million. And um, when you're buying one Bitcoin, you're buying just one of those blocks. That's how many there's going to be for 100 years, 1,000 years. No one expects there to be any more. Why is it a useful thing to buy? Because it passes the Bernard Arnault test. The Bernard Arnault test says, I have a lot of money. What should I invest it in? I should probably buy something that someone richer than me, more cultured than me, smarter than me, will want to buy from me in 10 years. So when you look at the things you own in your portfolio and you think, Will the smart money or the globe, will all of the global, intelligent, wealthy class, will they want to buy that from me? And if it's Picasso, probably yes. If it's 25 blocks in the middle of Miami Beach or 25 blocks in the middle of Manhattan, probably yeah, right? If it's, if it's uh, the Magna Carta, <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a trophy asset in the civilization, but... Bitcoin is the most popular, most well-known financial asset in the world that is an investment, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's second to the dollar, I suppose, as a pure financial thing. Everybody knows the dollar, but the dollar is not going up in value measured in dollars. So the dollar is only an investment asset for people in economies with hyperinflation. If you went to 10,000 rich families and you said... How'd you get rich? Not by buying dollars. How'd you get rich? Not by buying gold. Now that you are rich, what are you going to buy? Dollars? No. Gold? No. What are you going to What are you going to buy? A sports team? Maybe. Right. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci paintings? Maybe. Uh, the Magnificent Seven stocks? Maybe. A Bitcoin? Digital property? Maybe. The one thing that's for sure they'll say is property. Sailor's explanation of the fiat currency trap is so accurate and relatable because of his personal experiences as an investor and an entrepreneur. In 2020, after the excessive money printing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Sailor says his software and business intelligence firm, MicroStrategy, was sitting on $500 million in cash. But he knew the money would keep losing value if not immediately invested. This brought an even more pressing question where to invest $500 million long-term without losing everything to fiat debasement. Nothing appealed to Sailor, not the bond market, with its average 3% annualized returns, nor the S&P index, which only does slightly better at 7%, the same rate at which the dollar gets debased yearly. Sailor's search for a truly scarce, immutable asset that not only outperforms assets like bonds and stocks, but vastly outperforms the rate of fiat debasement led him to Bitcoin. Since the firm's first $250 million investment in Bitcoin, the Virginia-based firm has acquired over 214,000 Bitcoin with a staggering purchase price of $7.53 billion. During the discussion with Graham and Selby, the MicroStrategy executive chairman compares Bitcoin with other assets like art pieces and real estate, pointing out exactly why nothing even comes close to the leading digital asset. Here are more clips from the interview. Beachfront real estate right. is the is the closest conventional idea to a scarce desirable asset that the politicians can't make more of. What what is it the government can't print more of? They can print more bonds. Mm -hmm. They will issue trillions of dollars of bonds. They can print more currency, so don't buy that. Corporations can manufacture more Hershey's bars. 
and more Kellogg cereal and more, you know, Netflix can stream more videos, mm -hmm. right? So anything a company can create more of in a factory you don't want to buy, anything an AI can create, yeah, you, you know, you want to buy, you know, art rights. Well, if the AI can generate infinite free art personalized, then those art, those rights might not be worth anything. So you don't want anything a robot can do. You don't want anything an AI can create. You don't want anything a manufacturer can create. You don't want anything a politician can create. You ask the question, what's the thing that's least likely to be taxed or, or expropriated, seized from you? Bitcoin's interesting and beachfront property is interesting, but beachfront property is, it's illegal to buy it in certain countries. In the UAE, you couldn't buy it if you wanted to. You have to be a member of the royal family mm. to buy it. That's actually a law. In Florida, the beachfront property comes with a 2% property tax. So that means that you can buy it, but you're going to have to come up with an equivalent amount of cash to pay the tax to keep it for 30 years. But another way to say it is over 30 years or 20 years, the state's just going to take it away from you. So maybe you want to buy some floating property that doesn't have a 2% tax on it. <laughs> And the advantage of Bitcoin is maybe Bitcoin isn't property in Florida, but you can buy beachfront property in Wyoming. Can't I guess you can't. No, right? Mm. <laughs> so how do you move your beachfront property to Wyoming? Tricky. With Bitcoin, you can actually move your Bitcoin from Florida to Wyoming. And in the worst case, you could put it with a custodian in Singapore or Monaco or London, right? Carry it with you. So... It's less likely to get a property tax. If you own the best building in a country where there's a coup d'etat, they're taking your building. Like, look at, every, look at what happened to everybody that owned property in Cuba. Castro took it mm -hmm. all, right? And so you're, you're asking the fundamental question, why do I think Bitcoin will keep going up? Because every other investment is being diluted. It's either being, uh, it's being mismanaged you know, like you want to buy Kodak stock or Xerox stock? How'd that work out for you, right? Either your competitor destroys you, the management team destroys you, or it gets unionized. Mm -hmm. What happened to, you know, if you buy a car company, it gets unionized and, and then it gets bankrupted by the union. Maybe that wasn't a good investment. So companies have tariff risk, union risk, competitive risk, tax risk, execution risk, nexus risk. Alibaba was a good company, but maybe they can't do business in the US, right? So did you want to put all your money into a company that will get banned in the country you live in? That's the challenge there. All of that stack of risks. You can easily say that it adds up to about 7% per year. If the return on the S&P index is 7%, if I could get the risk to go away, the return would be 14%. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we call equity risks. And there's a bunch of them. But if I go to property, real estate, maybe the real estate gets rent controlled. Maybe the real estate gets taxed. Maybe the tax increases. Maybe the real estate is struck by a tsunami. Maybe the real estate rusts. Maybe the, re the real estate has, the neighborhood goes bad. Maybe people stop coming to the city, right? You had the best real estate in, this, in a city that died because the industry died, right? Maybe the country fails. Maybe the state fails, right? Real estate in theory is scarce desirable, but you know, we can make more land Half of Miami Beach is all just man-made. Half of Boston is man-made. Look at Emirates, a lot of man-made stuff. Go to Monaco right now. If, there's enough, if, if the value of your land goes up too high, they just build out and they'll reclaim the ocean. The entire airport in Hong Kong is made on reclaimed land. Yeah. So even land itself isn't truly scarce. And of course... Ultimately, there's there's plenty of real estate in the world. I mean, if you fly over the United States and you look down, you'll notice that 98% of the country is not occupied. Mm -hmm. Land doesn't make a good treasury asset. In related news, on-chain Bitcoin analyst Willie Wu believes Bitcoin is about to smash new all-time highs. A post he shared on social media platform X on Wednesday reads, Tapping 72,000 is the fuse that is set to start a liquidation cascade. $1.5 billion of short positions ready to be liquidated, all the way up to 75K and a new all-time high. Anonymous Bitcoin analyst Plan B is also looking forward to Bitcoin hitting new all-time highs and even six digits in 2024. One of his latest posts on X reads, My forward guidance for 2024 and 2025 has not changed since October 2022, when Bitcoin was below $20,000. 
rise into April 2024 having, having around stock to flow model value of $55,000, pump after having. Bitcoin crosses $100,000 in 2024. Bitcoin hits stock to flow target of 0 0.5 million in 2025 with a range between 0 0.25 million and $1 million. Plan B first three targets have been hit. Do you think Bitcoin will hit $100,000 before the year ends and $1 million next year? Please drop your replies, as well as comments on Sailor's interview in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our latest uploads.